glad Good you uh, made it today to class and to uh, for my presentation about let's see, countering chocolate obesity by Treasure Hair. That's me. <laughs> Here's my introduction. Childhood obesity has become a major issue within society. It has impacted our children drastically due to lack of physical activity and poor eating habits. Childhood obesity can be countered with proper guidance of healthy habits to motivate and to re-educate re our students to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So basically, we just want our students to get outside more and, and eat the right food, get more healthy, you know, just get more free to go out for 30 minutes, an hour, it doesn't matter, you know? Uh, just why I chose childhood BC. I chose childhood BC uh, because I wanted to make a difference in my students' daily lives. I wanted them to become more aware of what they can do to stay uh, healthy and fit. Because of course we want kids to stay healthy. You know, we don't want them to do anything else but to live a longer life and prosper. What is childhood BC? You might ask. A condition with excessive body fat known as adipose tissue. Contains negative effects, health effects on young children. <clears throat> can be linked to many diseases. Having a high BMI can lead to emotional, uh, physical, psychological problems. What's BMI? BMI, body mass index. Uh, There's going to be a slide about that out of oh, the end. So don't worry about it. What's it come from this presentation? And this year we will be discussing how to maintain a healthy lifestyle. This new specifically is to guide our children into a healthy habits so they could live a longer life. We will be discussing what kind of activities they should be doing after school. We'll be providing a food chart that will have a scale to it, like a scale like to balance. Like this is good better than this. Let's say an apple against hot dog in a way. How to maintain this lifestyle with, well, with motivation and how they, they could share these lessons without with others, like we want to motivate them, we want them to like actually go <coughs> share with a friend or share with someone else what they learned today and how they can motivate others to, to uh, be healthy with them. This doing is all about encouraging our children to stay healthy and to avoid the risk of heart disease and other medical problems. We really want them to uh, start living a healthy life with our helpful habits. Addressing the problem. The problem is the fact that these students are not educated to be healthy and aware of the right choices. Because uh, no one really teaches them how, what's, what's the right food or what, or what they should actually do. So it's our choice, that's our uh, objective to, to teach them that. Travis, you can push that chair over. Just push it over. There you go. Perfect. Got it. Children need the more progressive, proper guidance. That's why we're here. We want to properly guide them and to actually get attached to these habits so that it could uh, get live to adulthood if they, if they have if they could. Our students will learn to be physically active, and our students will choose the, the right kinds of foods to eat. Dressing at two. The session is intended for middle school students. I chose middle school for the fact that middle school students are still young and not yet adults. It is also important for the students to continue that these habits into adulthood, as I said previously. Why not start now? These students can continue from where they are to be healthy and fit. <coughs> now, just students be able to. Students be able to identify and choose healthy foods. Students be able to identify food labels. Make their own food pyramid. Students be able to uh, participate in lifelong activities. Make their own physical activity pyramid. Keep journals, logs, and entries with uh, checklists. Check heart rate. And discuss BMI. I'm going to do this for life. Good job. Since uh, <laughs> I will be seeing just, uh, my classes for like two days a week, uh, we do two separate lessons on each day. The first, lesson, the first day will be about healthy foods and, and like identifying foods and such, or the food labels, as I saw before, and students will be able to. And the next day is going to be a physical activity day for our students. This is uh, my first idea for a lesson. Students will be able to choose healthy foods. I would ask my class on what they know about healthy foods or what kinds of foods they think are healthy. Then I would begin to present the class to class of fruit veggie. When I present, I would ask the class if the item is a fruit or a vegetable. <coughs> I would use our visual images and bring in some healthy foods such as apples, oranges, pineapples, carrots, broccoli, spinach, etc., like everything you're seeing in the supermarket. I would also briefly explain the benefits of each food item to the class. Like for example, Apples have a lot of fiber. Fiber helps you lose weight. The class will be 
password, then split into groups and we'll work together on classifying a food item as a vegetable or fruit. They will also choose a food item of their own and explain to their group why they chose that fruit. Finally, I would uh, close up the class with going over everything we covered so we can review. Now, has anyone ever seen this before? Mm -hmm. What do you think this is? It was like a food label. Oh. <laughs> I was like, bitch. And that's how I started my class. See, I was started by showing the class a food label and I asked them what it is, like I just sort of uh, presented to you. Then I was simply explain the food labels and, and its characters with like all these things like, like calories, fats, trans fats, saturated fats, <coughs> um, how much sodium it has in it, or if it does have sodium, and all the vitamins in it. I will also discuss with uh, the class how much they should be consuming because there's a certain limit of how much you should be consuming every day and so you won't go over. So you can eat the uh, right food with the right form. I will also teach them a formula to see if the calories add up to the right amount provided on the label. Because you see sometimes here it says calories at 68, uh, it adds up to 68. Sometimes uh, well, it doesn't really happen like that. It doesn't really add up to that. So uh, here's an example of Doritos. Now you can go look at food there, right? This one has 150 calories. So there's a specific formula to figure out how you could see if, that, if you're actually getting the right amount of calories. See, uh, carbohydrates times by four, protein times by four, and then total fat times by nine. Then you add it up what you get. So for example, this one, it's 18, let's see, uh, carbs are 18, total carbs is 18 grams, right? So you times by four, yes, I mean two. Protein, two grams, times by four, you get eight. Then uh, total fat is eight, then you times that by nine. Then you add them up, as you see right here, 72 plus eight plus 72 equals 152. Now, this is what I mean. You see how the calories are at 150? This one came at 152. So it's a little off, but this is why it's good to check to make sure. It's a little over, but it's still important to check, like I said. I would ask my students to come up with their groups and each student in a group would choose one random food label to try it themselves. Like I would bring a whole bag, I could go to my house, I cut up different kind of food labels. And uh, each, each person in the group will come up, choose their own, and do this by itself, and then they will add up all the calories they have in that one group. Uh, for the next class, they can also bring in their own. Now, this is uh, my food chart. As soon as they make their own food chart, I will start by asking what uh, the class, what they see on the food chart. For example, you got your, your breads, your oils, your fats, your meats, your cheese, your dairy, your nuts, your fish and poultry and then healthy fats and oils, whole grains and vegetables, and all the bottom is a little quiz education. And um, this food chart basically shows you what you need to do, what, what, what you're consuming. I will then discuss the purpose of the chart to my class, like uh, why, why should you be consuming each one of these uh, types of food in this, in this uh, pyramid. Finally, I will discuss the section of the pyramid to the class. As an activity, I will have a, the class create their own food pyramid of food as they eat. So they could each take a section. So you can assume we would get a section, like I said before. They have one little section, they're right to put down what foods they eat or draw out they want to, and they're put together food pyramid. Then they'll present it in front of the class and describe the chart themselves. Now lifelong activities. So they would start to participate in lifelong activities. I see in the picture over here, just like this little girl having a running wicker. This lesson will have the students participate in physical activities. Activities will consist of endurance, flexibility, and balance and size. The activities will be in groups and students will co collaborate with one another. I will be demonstrating the activity or skill to the class. This is the point if we demonstrate, because then if not, they're not going to know how to perform the skill or what to do in the skill. Um, then I will have them try it themselves as a group. I will be assessing on how they participate in class. Now, the first activity I'll probably do is jogging. First activity? Jogging helps build endurance and discipline. I will first give a demonstration on how to jog by jogging back and forth, because there's a certain, there's a certain, uh, certain form to, for jogging, and I used to be a track runner, so it's, it'll be easier for me to teach the class. I'll be, I'll instruct the students to breathe in and out the mouth, because it's important, very important to breathe in through, through, throughout, throughout, in and out your mouth, because if you don't, it's going to clog up your nose in a way, and it's not going to feel great right when you run. So it's very like directly into your lungs, that, through your nose. I will also instruct the students to clear your mind while running. It's important to clear your mind because if you constantly keep thinking and start while you run, 
it's going to mess you up. You're not going to want to do anymore because you got other stressful things that are attacking you while you're running. So you should use that against it. Then we jog in swimming groups because it's important to run in groups. It's more fun. You guys can actually collaborate and talk to each other while you're running, you know. And it must motivate each other to continue running. As soon as we jog a mile, which is four laps, I will explain how many meters is, is, a, is a lap, which is 400 meters, which is one lap. So four laps is uh, 1,600 meters. So in the groups that we run four laps, we each other outside at the home pace. All look for is effort and students want to put in their own journals. Second one is going to be an option course, which is pretty fun for kids. I had a original option course picture that I did that I drew once, but I, I don't know where I put it, so I took this one. It's almost closely arrayed. As you see with the, how they set up, they start up here, then they go here and here, and there's different kind of obstacles you go through in each, in each uh, section, you know? And I had an like, idea of code survival, where they uh, run through the course and other kids with soft, soft um, foamy balls, and they had to like toss it or, or roll it to get the earth person out of a point. Uh, there'll be five teams, uh, one team at a time, we're running through the option course, with other teams are on the other side. The teams on the side of the lines will follow the team running through the course and will either roll the ball or toss the ball with the, if it has to be a soft ball or a bowling ball, just got to pull up there. <coughs> the type of ball will be foam ball. If any members of the team are hit with the, in the course, not while jumping over her, that's just an example, not just go over this. If they go over here, it's fine, here, you know? Um, they can't throw the ball when you're going through that. It gets one half point off. If it hits twice, then they cannot score for the team and must continue in the course. Teams are scored by whoever out of the five will make it to the end. Five, uh, if all five make it to the end, they get an extra five points. And also, the fast team gets another five points. So, it's a little competition. Wait, can you go back one second? So, while, while one team is going through the obstacle course, other people are throwing foam balls at them? Like, like a, uh, tossing like a softball yeah. or like a bowling ball. How many foam balls? Um, probably five for each team. I had, I had a picture. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think it's kind of fun, but I think it would be really hard, so. I had a, I had a picture of it from my, from my dev project okay. board and couldn't yeah. find it, so I had to find something else. Go ahead. Now, my last activity would probably be basketball. Basketball is all about stamina, balance, and speed. I will explain the characteristics of basketball, how to play basketball, how to dribble, how to pass, how to shoot, how to do a layup, find how points are scored in basketball. I'll demonstrate each of the skills of basketball to the class. There will be stations set up for the students. These stations would have one skill for each station. The students have a choice to go to a station to practice during skill. Students will be assessed during skill practice. Once again, students will must reflect in a journal. Now, the reason why I chose basketball because basketball you get a lot, of, you sweat a lot, and you you lose a certain amount of weight. That's how I feel when I play uh, basketball. It keeps very fit. It brings up uh, your heart rate. I also chose basketball because since the NBA finals are on too, probably kids in my class, some watch basketball and they're very interested and they want to play because they want to be like our heroes. And also for girls too, I'll find a way for them to enjoy it too, probably ask them to watch a game or such or have who they like in a way. Now, this is actually pretty new to me. I actually didn't know they have a physical activity chart, so I wanted to add it too. It's the same thing that looks like a food chart. I would start by uh, with having the class make a list of what activities they do at school or on the weekends. I would after ask how many of the activities on their list are physical activities. Then I would discuss the purpose of the chart to the class. Students would work independently on making their own physical activity chart on activities they do would uh, like to do or will do. So you see, like uh, they want you to do occasionally watch TV and games. Two or three to like stretching and flexibility, like if you want to do stretches, it's not good. It's good if you stretch so you don't get osteoporosis. Um, 20 to 30 minutes of running, tennis, or biking. You know, just, just come up with your own ways of uh, working out. And every day, like everyday activity, like what are you going to do? Like your job, you're, you're, you're taking, going out for groceries, or you're taking out the garbage, or anything like that. Sometimes it's going to keep you busy, like this guy's mowing the lawn. This one's going to take the stairs instead of elevator or escalator. This one's planting, this one's walking the dog. So. It's uh, activities you do on your own. Now uh, this one, this is uh, the picture you see up here. This is my personal book, which I actually brought in today. And this is going to be one of the journal entries. Now with this book in mind, I had kept every record in mind during our tr track season and also my summer workouts. And if you guys want, want me to pass it on, if you want to see it, 
of um, every activity or running event I did. You guys want to see it? Now, soon so I will keep a journal entry, right? I'll start by presenting the class my own personal journal, like I just showed you guys right there. I will discuss to the students the importance of keeping it a log and how it shows improvement. Because if you write down everything you did, and say you want to look back to your results, you see, go, or actually did this, and then you could be proud of yourself. You could be a little achievement, you know? And it makes you happy. It shows that you could go back, say, if you have to, like, be motivated, you could go back to this and re motivate yourself by looking at the book. I will also provide them the proper way and format of their logs, because there's a certain way they're doing it, of course. Everyone has its own certain way. Their first entry, what I want them to do. That's 15. Okay. Let's start. Their first entry up to the log will be a goal they, they want to reach. If they want to reach a goal, like, oh, I want to learn, lose 10 pounds in the next month or 20 or whatever, you know? A personal goal for themselves to keep themselves motivated. Checking heart rate. Students uh, will check their heart rate. I would ask the students to place two fingers on their vessels right here under your neck. While they're there, I'll ask them to count, for, count the beats while I have my stopwatch. And I'll tell them, count for 15 minutes, two, three, four, five, six. And after each, uh, after 15 seconds, I'll ask them to write it down so you won't forget. Then I will explain the importance of checking your heart rate to the class. I will also implement on why they should check their heart rate. I will now, now go back to the number record and have uh, them complete the equation. This is the equation. Students will take the number recorded and put it into an equation. The equation is 15 beats in a second times by four equals your heart rate. For example, my heart rate is 16 beats times four equals 56 at rest. For children under 18, their normal heart rates will be around 70, right? 70 100. Students will be given an assignment to check their heart rates every morning when they wake up and record it in the journals. So it's important to check with heart rate. So if it's between 70 and 100, then they're perfect. If it's not, then yeah. I was told it was it's 60. That's for um, that's for adults. Now, uh, during the BMI chart, students have the BMI. The class will start off with a demonstration of BMI by first using an online BMI calculator, which is easier for kids to use at first. My BMI came out to is uh, 22.2. The BMI chart will be presented in class as you see right here. The question I will ask is, uh, class, where do I fit in in the BMI chart? As you see at 22, where do you think I would fit in? Healthy. Healthy weight. And that'll be the answer. Then I'll explain the chart to the students with uh, each category. I'll explain each category to the students, underweight, heavyweight, overweight, and obese. I will now present to uh, how to calculate BMI while using a formula to the class and then give it them a certain measurements. Calculation. BMI calculation. Formula is weight or uh, over the inches times 703. Example. Weight is uh, 182. Inches, it's uh, five inches, but also you put in centimeters, it's easier. So centimeters, uh, 60 centimeters times two, uh, no, over two, um, exponent two, times 703. Square. Square. Squared, yeah, sorry. Okay. A BMI of uh, 35.5, which means this person is obese. Ooh. Example two, 150. 182, five, two, yeah. 150 divided <laughs> by uh, 72 uh, squared times 703. A BMI of 20.3, which is, means this person is healthy weight. And uh, this is my final message to you guys. I hope uh, you all learned and took something from uh, these lessons. Before you go, I want you to ask yourself if you have value. This, if you have value, this info I have presented to you. If you will change your ways and implement these healthy habits, it is to your choosing how you want to live your life. Just remember that life is always good. You just have to get out there and experience it, and to keep yourself active as much as possible. Until then, I hope you all live happy and healthy lives and to make a difference in yours. Yay! Woo! Yay! You made some excellent changes. Very nice. Um, <laughs> you have to leave to go get an award, I heard. Yeah. Good. So, Congratulations. Any critiquing on that? Or? No, there's no, right. we're, this is not, there's no critiquing, critiquing. going. Okay. I might email you something. Just